This year for Halloween, we're learning a trick that is really easy, extremely deceptive, really versatile, and the best part is all you need is two pieces of paper and a pencil. Welcome back to the channel, guys, and my favorite time of year. As you guys know, I love Halloween. I love Halloween magic. It's creepy, it's mysterious, and I love it. This year, we have a real gem for the Halloween tutorial. This is something that is so practical and versatile. We're gonna learn it today with a presentation that I love for Halloween time. It's a murder mystery, it's interactive, it's so much fun. But once you learn the method and how to apply it, you can use this for so many different contexts and I'm sure you guys are gonna come up with some amazing presentations. And as you know, the performance is always very important for me. So we're gonna start with that. Here is the performance. Welcome guys. I have some uh, concerning news. One of us is a killer. Dun, dun, dun. This is a murder mystery, yeah. Okay. He's pointing fingers, he looks really scared. Uh, it's a murder mystery. We're gonna have ourselves a murder mystery. And everyone who is here is invited. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unfold this piece of paper like this, and we're gonna write down uh, everyone's name. So we'll put Bao over here, and we have Jonah. He'll go over here, and uh, Kate's behind the camera. We'll put her, oh, E-cat. We'll just put E-cat, I think we know what that means. Jackie, that's J-A-C-K-I-E? Is that how you spell it? I spelled J-A-C-K-U-E. C? C -E. Q-U-E. Q-U-E, Jacques. Cool. Um, Liam, Liam, you're coming. And Danny's over here. And Ben. And me too, I'll be part of the suspect pool, Spidey. Spidey, I'm there as well. Okay, so these are all the suspects slash all the people who are invited to this event. And I'm going to tear like this so that each one of us gets an individual rectangle. Like cut into Liam a little bit over there, but you know, that's just, Sorry. yeah, that's the, just a little metaphor of things to come. Um, so all the names are there. Now, before we begin as a mentalist, I'm gonna try to predict who the killer is. I got it. We're going with that. I believe I've written down over here who I think the killer is. Now, here's how we're gonna figure it out. All these names are currently here, everyone present. And uh, Jonah, we'll start with you. I'm gonna hand you these names. We're gonna go to nighttime. So you're gonna go under the table. Darkness is upon us. And under the table, you're gonna mix these around like this. And then you're gonna grab, you know, one or two or three and flip them over and then grab a bunch more and flip those over. And then if you wanna turn two or one like this and then cut some more, just make a big mess. Under the table, grab those. So cut it, turn over two, turn over three, cut it again, turn more, turn less, whatever you want, really mess it up. Some face up, some face down. And when you're done, bring it onto the table in any orientation that you want. How's that feel, good? Excellent. So all the face up ones survived the night and the face down ones have met their tragic demise. Ben is still good. Jonah, you survived. Good job. Oh, we lost. Who did we lose here? Ecat, sorry. Sorry, Ecat, you didn't make it. And uh, uh, oh, Danny, you're out. Bao, didn't, didn't make it. Yeah. Uh, Liam, you're out, buddy. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm out. So maybe the trick stops here. And Jackie, you survived. Jackie, Ben, and Jonah, the Toronto gang, <laughs> survived. <laughs> Amazing. Bao, let's try this. You're gonna do the same. Take this under the table, under the table. And yeah, again, same thing. Mix it up, cut, turn over some, turn over two, don't just randomly. And then when you're done, bring it up here. Let's see how you do. So the second night is upon us. Jackie, you've survived. Jonah, you've survived. And Ben is out. You guys could see that. This is also a good matchmaking trick, apparently. Yeah. Um, Let's go to, uh, back to, actually Jackie, go take this under the table once again. So cut, flip, cut, flip, flip both, flip one, and then, yeah, and then pass it to bow under the table. Let's try that. Pass it to bow under the table. You do it as well, under the table. Flip one, flip two, that way we have no idea what's going on. And then bring it on top when you're done. Let's see what happened. The third night is upon us. You both survived. Wow, you guys are really, really hanging in there. Really hanging in there, guys. Really, really hanging in there. Wow, good job. Yeah, randomly flip some up, down. Yeah, shuffle, bring it up. 
Oh, Jonah. Jonah, by your own hand. Guys, that's it. Everyone's out. Nobody has survived. That means the one survivor, Jackie, it was you all along. I thought it was her. There was something about her. I knew it, right? There was something about her. But here's the crazy thing. Before we started, I made a prediction. I tried to predict who the murderer was. One prediction right here. I haven't touched it. I predicted it was Jackie. Wow. <laughs> and it's spelled right. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> there it is. Wow. Let's learn it. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. There it was. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as you know, I always love to give you guys a little bit of history. And in this case, the history is also going to give you some more presentational ideas. So there's a very old mentalism trick with coins where you give the spectator a handful of coins, they shake it and dump it on the table and they eliminate all the ones that land tails side up until there's one left and it matches a prediction. It's so old that I don't even know where it came from. So if we have any seasoned magicians or you know performers who know their history well, let me know in the comments. I will add it in the description, but it's a really old trick. And there have been some really great variations on that. Jay Sankey has one that's really, really excellent. But years ago, I wanted something that if I'm stuck in a jam and I really just don't have anything on me and I want to perform something, I wanted to come up with a version that I can just do on the fly. And I came up with something with a piece of paper. So I could just borrow a piece of paper, a pencil, and I'm good to go. Now, when I came up with it, it wasn't for the routine we're learning today. It was for a routine where we were doing like a dream vacation, like an imaginary vacation, and we we're going to pick a destination. And you can still very much use it for that. Destinations, colors, animals. I know a lot of you play Among Us, and I'm sure you could come up with a great presentation for that. Um, if you play board games like Clue, you can use the characters from Clue. There's endless, sometimes I use like classic movie monsters, like, you know, um, Jason, Freddy, Chucky, Dracula, and we write all those down, and one of them is the ultimate killer. So you can come up with a million presentations here to justify this process. And I'm sure you guys are going to have fun with that. Let me know in the comments what you come up with. But right now, we're going to go right into the explanation step by step to learn what's happening here and my version of this great principle with paper. To perform this murder, mystery, mentalism, miracle, you're going to need a couple of things. And everything can be borrowed. It totally depends on how elaborate you want to get. So the bare minimum is two pieces of paper and a pencil. It has to be a pencil. That's the one thing. It can't be a Sharpie or a marker. Now for the explanation, I'm going to be using a Sharpie only because I want you to really see where everything goes because a pencil won't show up as good on camera. But in real performance, it has to be a pencil. Finally, I like to use an envelope with a fancier piece of paper like this for my prediction just because it makes it presentationally cooler, more mysterious. But you really, really don't need this part for the prediction. You can text it to someone. You can write it down on a scrap piece of paper. Get creative with that but I like to get fancy with it and have this nice envelope with another paper. But again, totally optional. So there is going to be a preparation and it depends on how you're presenting this. So if you're gonna do it the way I did it in the performance, you're doing it for a group of friends and one of us, somebody in there is the murderer. So what you need to know is the name of one person who's going to be there. And you can just go off, you know, if you're at a, at a party or hanging out with some people, you got a piece of paper, go off into a corner, really quickly prepare this. It literally takes two seconds. Uh, but if you're going to do a presentation that's more like we're going to choose an animal or a country or you're going to use characters like for movies, um, I love to do that as well, then you, you don't need to know who's going to be there. So what is the preparation? Let me grab one piece of paper to show you. You're going to take a piece of paper and you're going to fold it in half like this. And it doesn't have to be 8 by 11 printing, printing paper. It could be uh, any, any you know, rectangular paper. You're going to fold it forward like this. Then you're going to fold it over like this. You're going to close it like a book, like this. And finally, you're going to fold it away from you like this. So if you were to open it, it would go like that. So once again, you're folding down, you're closing it like a book, and then you're folding down, but not towards yourself this time, away from yourself, like that. Now you're going to open it up. And the, I guess the force square or the force rectangle is this one. So we have eight rectangles now, one, two, three, four, five. The sixth one is the one that they're going to end up with. 
Now, again, I'm going to use a Sharpie because I want you to see what I'm doing here, but you're using a pencil. And in a second, you're going to see why. You're going to turn over the whole paper away from you like this. So I'm grabbing the end and I'm turning away like this, placing my force piece over here. You're not going to want to turn it over like this, but away from you. You want it to be upside down and there's a good reason for that. And you're going to write down the force name. So let's say in this case, I will put my cat's name Nimbus. So Nimbus is going to be the murderer in this case. So we're going to put that there. And now if I turn the paper up like this, you see why in real performance, you don't want to use a Sharpie because it bleeds through with a pencil. They wouldn't see that at all. You can write very lightly with a pencil, but now you guys could follow it. The reason I do it upside down, I'm a perfectionist. And at the end, if I write Nimbus here the right way, the, they're going to see that the straight edge is on the end of it. And in this case, it matches. If you wrote it the right way, like you wrote Nimbus like this, the straight edge would be where you started and it wouldn't make sense. I don't know if that made any sense, but trust me on this, that's going to look a lot more congruent. So now that's your preparation. You fold the paper once again, forward, close the book and fold forward like this. And that's it. You're ready to begin. You put this, you know, you can have this in your hands, in your pocket. I usually keep it in the envelope, but now you're ready to begin. You're going to come out like this and you're going to show the paper on both sides, very casually. Like you're showing both sides like this and you're going to come back to this orientation and you're going to unfold away from you. There's a cool subtlety here where they feel like they saw the other side of this, but they didn't because if they did, they would see that. Now you're going to open the book like this. You're going to set it down and you're going to unfold like this. So they think it's just a piece of paper. There's also a freedom there that they feel like they saw all the sides when they did it. Now you're going to start your presentation and you're going to say, you know, there's a murder mystery and one of us amongst us is the murderer. And we're going to try to figure out who that is. By the way, I'm going to throw in a hot tip here. Um, if in the group of people, there's someone who spells their name a little differently or out of the ordinary or someone that you don't know that well, that's the one you want to go for. Cause there's going to be a cool little subtlety that you can use here to really convince them that there's no way you could have planned ahead on this. Uh, anyways, at this point, the paper is open and you're going to start your presentation. So you're going to go around the room and you're going to say, you know, there's a murder mystery. One of you is the murderer and uh, we're going to try to figure out who it is. And I'm going to try to crack this case wide open. So, now you're going to write down the names of everyone who's in the room. So let's say I'm having a magic gathering. And as I go around the table, uh, I write down the name of some of my friends. So we can have like uh, Chris and we write that down here and we can have Spade. He's coming and Ekaterina, she's coming as well. And uh, let's say Bao is coming as well. Like that and uh, who else is coming? Shin is invited. Now you get to the one where you, you have the, that force item, the one that you're going to predict. Now, this is the reason I like something here that could commonly be misspelled a different way. Let's say there's someone there whose name is Catherine, for example. Um, I would say something like, well, is that Catherine with a C or a K? And they tell me, so in their head, I didn't know the way it's supposed to be spelled. That's just a little subtlety. But in this case, it's on, it's my cat Nimbus. So we write down Nimbus. And of course you wouldn't see that sort of bleed through. So it would just look like it says Nimbus there. Uh, and then who else? Um, uh, let's put Jonah. And uh, let's say we're also bringing whoever I invited yet. Uh, Galley. Galley's coming. So we have eight names like this from people who are present and you write them all down. And now you are going to begin the tearing process. So when you fold this, you have the option of folding it multiple times to make sure the creases are well defined, but this totally works without that either. So you're going to grab like this and you're going to tear straight down and it's totally okay if it's not a straight line, if it looks messy like that, that's perfectly fine. Then you're going to come here. You're going to tear this in half like this. And then you're going to put that on top there. You're going to tear down the middle. and do that. So now the situation is we have eight pieces of paper. Each one has a name on the face of it, except for the one that says whoever you're going to choose to force Nimbus on the back also says 
nimbus. And here's what I mean by, by what I said earlier. If you look at the way it's spelled, nimbus, the straight edge is here. And then again on that, that way, if you read it nimbus, the straight edge is there. It's exactly where it should be. So that's there. At this point, you're gonna make your prediction. Now again, you can text it to someone, you can write it down on a piece of paper. I like to make this really fancy. So I take, you know, like a thicker uh, cardstock like this and a nice envelope and I hold it up so no one could see. And I write down, um, it was Nimbus. And of course they don't see me writing this and I hide it in the envelope and I basically you say, I'm gonna try to predict who the, uh, the killer is here. And I put that away like that. Now I've been asked before if I ever write down my prediction before the trick starts. In some tricks that's okay. In this one, I don't love that idea because it hints that I knew one of the elements that was gonna be there. Uh, I like to make this super casual in such a way where it's like, even if it's a bigger group, it kind of looks like I'm just randomly writing stuff down. So in their heads, it could have been anyone who's in the room. So if I write down a specific name from the beginning before we start, it kind of hints that there was some preparation here and I really wanna make this seem like there's no preparation. That's why I write it down at this point. So now we have our pieces of paper and I explain, you know, we're gonna to go to nighttime and when we wake up, we're gonna notice that some people are dead or missing, whatever your scenario is, whatever you wanna go with, totally up to you. And to represent that, you tell someone that they're gonna take these, go onto the table and they're just gonna grab a bunch and turn them over like this. So you can demonstrate like that. You can say sometimes you could do a one at a time, sometimes you could do bunches at a time, totally up to you. And you hand them this under the table. So they're gonna grab this and under the table, they're gonna turn over a bunch like this and you tell them you could do two or three. And basically the principle here is that no matter what they do, the one you're forcing, Nimbus, could never be face down because it's on both sides. So now they come up and you say, okay, let's see who didn't make it through the night. Okay, Shin stay with us, so is Spade, so is Nimbus. See, this one could never be face down. Um, oh, Chris is out. Gally's still here, Jonah's still here. Ah, he cuts out and bows out. Damn it. So those go aside. Now you take this, they go under the table, you give it to someone else, you get the same person. They go under the table and they do it again. So you say, okay, grab a bunch, turn them over, shuffle them up, do it again like this, whatever it is, like that. So now they come up again and you say, oh man, Spade is out and uh, Da, ah, Shin's gone as well. Nimbus is still here. Gally's out and Jonah is still here. Make this very clear for them. You go, okay, two left. Go under the table. Now, listen, sometimes you do this, it takes four or five rounds. It's, I don't remember a single time where it took me more than, I don't know, like six, seven. So make it fun, have fun with it. This is a really interactive trick. So maybe they go under the table again and you know, they do this and they do that and really encourage them to do it a lot. That way they don't go, wait a second, I flip that one over and it's still face up. So really encourage them, come on, mess it up, shuffle them up, turn it. And now they come up and you go, oh man, they're both hanging in there. Let's try it again. And eventually it's gonna come to a point where one of them is face down. It's gonna be this one, Jonah. Now, what I like to do is I like to drop that and the rest of the papers will be here as well off to the side. So you drop it with those and you drop this one on top like that. Keep in mind, this isn't that important. It's scraps of paper you used for this elimination process. So you can absolutely get rid of these. I've never had an experience where somebody was like, let me see those pieces of paper. There's nothing to see, it was in their hands. So get rid of these, this is gone. And now you come to this and you go, all right guys, we had ourselves a murder mystery and the only one who survived was Nimbus. And it turns out he was the killer. And now you really take your time with this and you open your envelope and don't open it like this. I don't want them to see it as it comes out like this. You pull it out to yourself like this and you go, I made a prediction before we began. It was bam, bam, ba -da 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 -da. Nimbus. There it was guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, keep in mind, I love this presentation for Halloween time, the murder mystery. One of us did it, but you can do so many different things with this and I can't wait to see what you guys are gonna come up with. Let me know in the comments how you're gonna use this. Are you gonna do the murder mystery or do you already have an idea for something else you're gonna do with this? Let me know in the comments. Guys, have a great Halloween. Go blow some minds. It's really the season. Trick or treat, right? Time for tricks. And I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>